Hi you guys, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer and I am a psychologist and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening and all of life is a spiritual awakening. So let's get to it. What I keep hearing is get to the other side of the storm, just make it through the storm. So what happens is like what I was seeing, I was seeing a vision of when I was little, my parents were out for some reason, I had a babysitter and there was a tornado that happened to be coming around. I lived in Texas. And so we had to get in a closet and the wind was like blowing outside, like really strong, obviously. And, you know, I'd seen the Wizard of Oz. So I'd seen a tornado go through before. And I just remember that moment because you remember big moments like that when your adrenaline goes up it, it sears that memory in your brain somehow I mean they explain how but I remember not knowing if I would make it through or you know that it was so weird that my parents weren't there if I was going to die you know So what happens, I, what, what's pressing on my heart to teach you about today is just <sighs> when I breathe like that, it's because I'm, I'm getting some kind of a download and I have to breathe through it. Usually I think that's, I don't know. I just, that's why I'm doing it. But so Sometimes we have storms in life where they know in psychology, right, that when you're in your logical brain, you know, that's your left brain. Uh, you can, you think logical thoughts and it's like, um, you know, math or whatever. Uh, your emotional brain is your right brain and that's more all the emotions, the emotional experience, you know, feelings. And when you have when you experience like a happy state, it feels like that happiness is going to last forever. When you feel like a dark state or depressive or something, it feels like that's going to last forever because your logical brain sort of goes offline and it doesn't know about time because you're in this deeply emotional state. And so, you know, um, just the past couple days, I was going through this like fog where everything was triggering me and I just was feeling so much um, pain or doubt or, or whatever. And someone brought up today in a Zoom meeting I was in, they were saying like, well, you guys have to know that there's spiritual warfare going on. You know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but, uh, you know, and it reminds me in... Tolkien's book in the Lord of the Rings he describes so vividly Tolkien describes so vividly this time where the ring wraiths fly over and like he describes it in all detail like their hearts get all you know their hearts like drop and all their courage goes away and everything looks dark for a moment and uh Tolkien had been in battle before lost lots of his friends in the war that he was in that he had to go to uh So I know that feeling and I wish I had noticed. I knew something was going on, but I just, I couldn't identify all of it because when you're in the middle of it, it's like you're in the middle of the storm. When you learn how to get in the eye of the storm, it makes everything different. You know, uh, you have, you have this peace that passes all understanding. One of my friends was asking me, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm so much better than I was before. Uh, Cause I, and then I just saw a, a vision of a washing machine and I saw I'd been through like a washing machine. I felt like I'd been through a washing machine really, you know? And then now I feel like I'm more in the center of the washing machine. So all of it's going on around me, but I've learned how to be more present and more 
aware and not caught up in all the drama that's around me. But for you, for you, all right, I want to encourage you. That's why I make these videos. I, I talk about this stuff so that I can be open so that you can see yourself in my stories and whatever I'm sharing. This is for you. If you go in a dark place, I know people can say that's not going to last and it doesn't feel like that's true, but it is true. It's like it's winter and then it's spring and summer and fall and winter, like seasons will change. But when you're in the middle of it, it, it can be so disheartening. You have to practice looking not with these eyes, but with your inner eyes, with a remembrance of the vision that was given to you or remembrance of higher things or remembrance that you have the possibility of taking your life seriously, of being more conscious of, uh, like, why do you want to give your life away to dissipation, to giving your life away to habits, you know, to chasing after emptiness that you know isn't going to fill, isn't going to fill uh, this longing that you're longing to be filled. I remember yesterday, last night, late last night, I tweeted this thing because I was listening to this part of a Tony Robbins talk, okay? And so he talked about, hopefully I can just remember it, four states, all right? So there's four conditions. And he said he got this when he was on a run. So that's awesome. You know, you get these downloads, this intuition, this knowing from, from trying to work out a problem in your own life. But he said there are things that we do that we feel good doing them and that are good for other people and that are good for the greater good. And that we like okay so there, there's four conditions in it i think that's what it was and so in this one it's like you find something that's your passion and you like it and it feels good while you're doing it and it's good for everyone you know like making this youtube video let's say for other people you know and um it's good for all it's not just good for others it's good for all people right and then he said there's this other state where you know, there's something that you ought to do that is good for other people and good for you, that's good for all people, you know, that um, it's good for the other people involved and you. It's good for all people because it helps everybody. And it's, uh, but this one doesn't feel good. You do like it, but it doesn't feel good because it's kind of like, it's like, uh, if you want to like work out or something and um, you know that will help other people somehow let's say it'll inspire other people or it will help them see the best that they can do in their lives and everything but it's something that you know takes discipline or um Like being present with your spouse, let's say even, you know, working on stuff. Uh, all right, so then there's another one, he says, where it feels good, but it is not good for you. And it is not good for other people. And it's not good for all people at large. And yet we go back to it because it feels good in the moment. And we know it's not good for us. And we know it's not good for other people. And we know it's not good for the whole, you know, it's not giving back to society either. It's taking actually. And, um, you know, you go back to that because you get this low feeling from other things and you just are habituated. If, if you had poor examples around you of people going for these less, lesser things or showing you by their examples that there's not more than that, then that's another reason why we go for that. We don't see that there are higher options. You can be more conscious about your life and take back power. You know, like let's say you do go to an addiction or something and um, you know, this is your life. So you, you get to look at it. 
it's not about doing anything different because people shame you or anything like that. It's like, look inside yourself and feel like, why, why am I doing this one thing? What, what, who is it serving? Why, why do I want to keep serving myself in this momentary thing that robs from the rest of my life? That's not giving back to society. That's not giving back to others. That's not giving to me. And then the, the fourth one was, it doesn't feel good. And it's not good for myself and not good for others. And I don't like it. And so I don't know why we return to those. Um, maybe because we're used to misery, you know, we're used to, you're not allowed to feel good. So let's do this shameful thing. I have a lot of theories about that one. You know, sometimes we don't feel good about ourselves from some definition someone gave us in childhood. So we create scenarios in our life where we sabotage a lot of things so that we can have a, we can, we form a reason. There's cognitive dissonance without that. We form a reason for why we feel so ashamed. We just create some shameful thing. Then we have a way to point to why we f we're feeling so rejected by other people. But he was saying, Tony Robbins was saying all these things serve us in some capacity. You know, you're doing it for a reason. And then understanding you don't have to go back to those, those behaviors. You don't have to give yourself something that doesn't, that has such a low reward. You know, he, he, his idea was that if you shift that second thing, the second one of learning how to conditioning yourself to begin to love and feel good about doing the one that, you know, is more difficult for you to like, but it's good for you, good for other people, you know, like learning how, uh, I'm like roller skate, you know, learn how to work out in a way that you end up loving and it's good for you and good for other people. And this discipline becomes some magical, beautiful thing. But about the storm real quick and getting to the other side of that, it's just, I feel like for me, it was something of a shift. I was shifting to this new place. I had said, I said no to, to these old, old patterns or habits that I was used to saying yes to that. I, it wasn't treating myself with as much respect and dignity as I know that I'm worth now. And so as I said, no, it's like all these things were trying to pull me back into that pattern and go, well, let's pull you this way and pull you this way as you say no and move on. And as you say no and commit to something higher, supernatural help does come in. Like divine love comes in and helps you. It's like you take one step, it takes 10 steps, you know? Uh, mm, I have a thing over on the left that says follow after righteousness. But I look at righteousness, I was shown it was right wayness, the highest way. Follow after highest wayness, like this right pathness, the best path. Not trying to please anyone, just doing what's highest and best for your soul because you are a soul. I was contemplating the other day, why would Christ come here? Why would Christ live the way he lived and teach what he taught and not teach other things and not heal all of the earth, let's say, or in that moment, you know, but why would he follow his mission and say, you know, thy will be done and teach us all of these ways to pray and ways to be unless it was purposeful, unless there was some kind of reason for him to do this. And it was striking my heart that it was like, just like there's a reason that he came here. There's a reason that you're here on this earth. You know, some mystics and stuff say that there are billions of souls wanting to come here at this time and we got to be here and we're here for a reason you know and when you're throwing away that reason and just running after what's going to make you feel good in the moment so you can run away from your pain or numb your pain or not feel your feelings or step on other people or use other people or walk away and not be courageous and not be present you know in your own life in your own life and in other people's lives that care about you 
it, when you do that, which you can, you'll learn from that as well. You will learn from that. So it's like, I, it's not mine to judge anybody. You know, if that's the path that, that I want to take or they want to take or anything, but it's like, if you're here and your soul wanted to come here, your soul had a reason for coming here. Why throw away that purpose? Because there are other energies or other powers that want to use you and want to take this from you and want to keep you distracted and want to keep you away from your purpose and want to keep you running after short-term pleasure so that you stay numb and don't become your full soul self. Don't live from that essence self because your consciousness is all caught up in running after these things of the earth, you know, that, that are only temporary, you know, that what if your soul wanted a deeper lesson or wanted to wake up other people or you have a gift inside of you like we all do and you have the capacity to cultivate that gift or to be distracted and distracted and distracted you know i keep thinking of like pinocchio you know how he went to that fair and turned into like he was about to turn into a jackass you know Because he didn't know he could be a real boy, you know, a real man. He, he's just staying this wooden puppet, you know, thinking he has freedom. You know, I love to laugh and I love skating and being all joyous and at ease. I also, I also appreciate looking at the serious things in life and. Asking, asking yourself, what am I here for? What, it, what, it, what do my soul want for me to be here? If there are so many other billion souls that really wanted to be here at this time, but I got a chance to be here, what am I doing with my life? Look, I have a post-it note. Life is fun. It's fun when you have enough love, when you're blocking it out by running after things that look like love that you know are not love. You take away the fun that you could have, you know, in this joy and this forgiveness and, and grace and innocence and walking with integrity and learning you know, I've had to learn so much about what it is to stand up for myself as a woman. And like the hard truth of seeing the ways I wasn't standing up for myself. And I was letting people walk on me because I thought that's what I had to do. <sighs> All right. I wish you love. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys either on my channel or on um, my profile and Instagram, wherever you're seeing this, I appreciate it. Share this, like it, subscribe, and, um, you know, give me feedback for what else you'd like for me to talk about. I have 20 years plus as a psychologist and years before that in my knowledge bank and in my wisdom. And I have all this pain that I've gone through that I've learned how to get to the other side and keep on persevering. I'd love to help you in specific ways. Just let me know. You can uh, direct message me on Instagram or um, comment here or on any of my videos. Much love.